Uh, so our goal for today is to watch a few Ed Puzzle videos, answer a couple questions, and then we're gonna do, again, a little activity. I'll get you away from your computer. Again, it's gonna involve water, so we'll see how that goes. Um, and this time I'd like you to actually record yourselves and see if we can get those uh, recordings up on Flipgrid. Uh, and then if we have time, there's also a little FET that we'll work on or that will just uh, transition into the homework and that's all that I'll give you. Um, no reading or anything today. So uh, as usual, let's start with a do now. Um, this one is not graded, this is just for review. Uh, it's based on the activities we did in our previous class. Uh, so click on that. It should actually take you to a Google form, um, not a Canvas quiz this time. And uh, once again, I'll time for about three minutes, uh, but I'm listening in, so let me know if you've got questions or something isn't working. Three minutes, go for it. All right, looks like we've got um, eight responses. Uh, Will must have dropped out or lost connection or something. I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh, but um, so let's see how we're feeling about those activities um, we did yesterday. Uh, haven't had a chance to look over your discussion posts yet, but um, I will look at those soon. So uh, looks like we're feeling good on these. It's interesting seeing the voting in a smaller class. So. First question is think about the activity with the previous lesson about the cup of water and why did the water dribble out from the hole that you made in the cup? Uh, the correct answer is that the water is pulled down to uh, earth by earth's gravity. You gotta think about gravity's pulling, uh, but you held the cup in place. And then this sort of puts into context what happens later. Um, but again, I can see how a lot of people do think gravity is uh, pushing, uh, but it is not. Um, you're being pulled towards the center of the earth. Uh, there's no pushing really involved um, at all. Uh, usually that's what air resistance is doing and things like that. Um, so think back to when you move the finger and drop the entire thing, very good, right? Uh, gravity acts on all objects. That was one of Newton's big um, ideas. And so that was what was happening was they're basically falling together. Uh, and that explains a lot about what's going on with orbit and things like that as well, and astronauts and space station and things like that. Um, think about when you drop the paper, very good. Everyone got that the paper is lighter uh, and is therefore more heavily affected by um, air resistance, no pun intended there. Uh, but when you put the paper on top of the book, um, the book was essentially drafting for the paper, right? Um, does everyone know what I mean by drafting? And I'm like a fan of watching like um, the Tour de France or like bicycle races. Does anyone know in bicycle races, it's kind of a weird thing that they do, but does anyone know what, what um, during a bicycle race, what a lot of the riders will, will trade off, what position they often trade off? Behind another person, right? Isn't mm -hmm. in the front, like, oh, never mind. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. So they take turns being in front while everyone else can be behind, right? And so uh, it's weird to think, but you'll watch a race and you'll see like the person in front will drop back and be like, hey, it's your turn to be in the front. And that's because that's what they call drafting. That person is essentially cutting through all the air resistance. So they're working a little bit harder than everyone else behind them. And it's actually cool. I've watched the whole thing about like mathematically calculated exactly like how much more exertion you have to give in the front and stuff. And, um, it's pretty nuts. Uh, and it all comes down to um, to that, the same kind of concept of, of wind resistance and being able to slice through it. So um, good, looks like we are feeling good there. Uh, any questions or comments on that? All right, uh, I just wanted to take a moment like we would normally do in class to double check on the homework. Uh, first of all, you should make sure that you've submitted the um, like a link to your notebook through Canvas. That's what I'll be grading as I go through. So. Um, having that link just lets me pull up your notebook right in the, in the Canvas grader and then I can find the questions. So uh, was there anything from these reading questions, uh, one, three, five, and seven, that you had a hard time with or anything you have a question on? All right, looks like we're feeling good. Okay, uh, then I will collect that or I'll uh, grade that. <laughs> I don't have to collect it from you. I mean, hopefully you have submitted it online. So, um, all right, uh, our next task is to watch two short Edpuzzle um, videos. Uh, the first one is eight minutes long. The second one is less than a minute long. Um, this is my first time using Edpuzzle. Um, I put these together last night. They should work well. Um, how many of you, if I stop sharing really quickly, how many of you have used Edpuzzle before or in other classes? Most of you, okay, so you all know how this works. So you're gonna watch the video and you'll hit points where it asks you a question or 
I'll put a note in or something. So you just kind of got to work through it. Uh, this isn't anything that I'm going to grade, um, but it will collect your responses and we'll kind of look over some of that stuff. So um, given that these videos are about 10 minutes long in combination, plus the questions, um, why don't we say um, we'll take 15 minutes um, to work through these two things. Uh, so I'll time this for 15 minutes and then we'll come back together, which works out well. Um, that means we'll be, we'll be coming back right at nine o'clock. Uh, so I've got the videos embedded right here, um, but you can also click on the links that are right above them. So like you'll see this one here, it says which way down, that should take you to the Edpuzzle site. Um, Edpuzzle works a lot like the um, insert learning thing we learned. Um, the class code for you guys for Science 2A is uh, this one, Fabri, F-A-B-I-R-E-E. -E. Um, honestly, I've never used this with students before. So do you guys know like, it, so when you click on the link, does it ask for like a class code or something? Uh, for me, I just did it like right now and it just like let me go into the video. Cool. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I think it'll just collect your response through my, you know, through my class thing and maybe I can sort out the classes or something. But all right, if it ever asks for like a class code or something, um, just cl uh, type that in. Um, it's available right there. But otherwise, yeah, you can just work on it on your own. Um, all right. Well, then let's plan on meeting back in this room at nine o'clock. If you want to leave the Zoom room and come back at nine, you're welcome to do that or just turn off your, your mic or uh, in video, whatever you need to do. Uh, but we'll check back in in uh, 15 minutes and I'll be hanging out here listening. So if you've got questions or something isn't working, just let me know. All right, go for it. All right, kiddos, uh, if you're still working on the videos, that's okay. You can stay in mute and just keep going till you're done. Uh, but I'll start sort of reviewing and looking over things. Uh, so for those of you who are done, um, be good to unmute yourselves just so you can jump into the conversation, offer us a little bit of feedback. Um, how do you all feel about Edpuzzle? Like uh, you probably used it in other classes. I mean, are you kind of liking video stuff, not liking it? Like be honest. Uh, I think it's good because like the questions like I don't know they keep you like making uh, attention with the video and like it just like it's kind of like a checkup and I, I use it for math all the time and I don't know I like the site how it works. All right. Yeah. This is my first time using it. I'm, I'm playing with a bunch of different online tools and this was another one that um, you know Stevenson offers so I was like all right I'm just gonna sign up for it and go for it. So um, do you get them often as homework or classwork? What would you say you use them more as? Uh, sometimes we do classwork for math and sometimes we do homework. It's like a mix of them. A mix? Anyone mm -hmm. else? Um, we usually use it for homework. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that might be something that I'll transition to. Makes a little more sense to, to do. And, uh, seems pretty seamless. You were all able to somehow populate the, the correct class. So did you end up typing in like a code or joining the Science 2A class or something? Yeah, clicking the link automatically, it says oh, like probably. class code and science class. Oh, okay. All right. Like set of science class and the class code under it. Cool. So it all, like the link already. I don't know how it does it, but it, it did it somehow. So cool. All right. That's good to see. Uh, all right. So uh, yeah, those were two videos. I only showed you a portion of that um, first video. It's a long thing, the, the Vsauce thing. He, I think that original video is about 26 minutes long uh, and he goes into a lot of stuff. But I just want to highlight some of the key things more from our reading. Uh, in terms of what is the difference between mass and weight, the important takeaway from this is that mass is how much matter you have. Um, your mass never changes, right? Unless you get sliced in half or something or lose an arm. Um, otherwise, you are the mass that you are. Um, weight is dependent upon gravity, right? Um, you would have a different weight on the moon versus being here on Earth or being in space or being on Mars. Um, so weight is um, relative to what is around attracting you. Uh, it's determined by gravity. Uh, mass is just how much matter you made. Um, so that's kind of a, I think, good, important takeaway. And so that was that next question is, why do we say that astronauts in space are weightless, but not massless? What would happen to an astronaut if he or she became massless? Uh, does anyone know what would happen to an astronaut if they were massless? Um, it's kind of a silly question. They have like no gravity, like no pull, because like there'd be like nothing to pull them. Yeah, well, that, so that's weightlessness, right? So weightlessness means that gravity is extremely low. Though again, we learned that is there is there something as being truly weightless? Can you ever experience zero gravity? 
No, no, you can't, right? It's just a, you experience a reduced form of gravity that uh, makes it appear that you are uh, not experiencing it. But uh, if you were mass, if an astronaut was massless, would the astronaut still be there? No, no, no. no that's, that's the thing, right? If, <laughs> if an astronaut was massless, they would disappear, right? They, they would not exist. There would be no matter making up that astronaut, right? So it's kind of a silly question. Um, but that's why we say that you, you should never say that an astronaut is massless because that means the astronaut has been eliminated. Uh, it's, uh, that's why we use the term weightless um, to describe them. And it gets back at that difference again. Um, so what does Michael mean when he says uh, weight is mutual? And again, this is one of those, these physics things that just uh, really messes with my mind, but you've got to kind of change your perspective. And that's the idea of that, you know, if you weigh 200 pounds on earth, then earth is weighing 200 pounds on you. Um, which is weird to think, but like, you know, a lot of you are sitting in chairs right now. Uh, you are weighing on that chair, but what else is true? The chair is weighing on you. Technically, the chair is weighing on you as well, uh, because um, you have a gravitational attraction to it, right? Uh, and I guess that's one thing that contributes to why our butts get sore eventually, right? Because you have these two forces that are kind of colliding with each other, uh, and therefore we perceive um, gravity that way. So what would happen to the International Space Station and the astronauts if the ISS were to suddenly just stop moving, if it stopped rotating around the planet, what would it do? Very good, I saw everybody doing this. Yeah, it would fall just like the apple, right? That fell on um, Newton, right? Um, that It's that uh, tangential velocity that keeps uh, orbits going, and if they were to stop that, then they would fall like everything else does. Um, Multiple choice, what does it mean that astronauts have no apparent weight? Um, it is all of those things, right? So I, I had never thought about this before, but like how do we perceive our weight? And it's a weird thing, you know, it's like gravity and balance. It's um, lying on soft things versus hard things. It's, um, you know, uh, again, like your butt getting sore when you're on a bicycle seat or something like that, because those are the forces that are acting. Astronauts never experience those things. In fact, um, there's some great videos out now about what life in space is like. Uh, does anyone know what an astronaut has to do when they go to sleep? Um, what do they do? As, what are their beds? They have to like drop in. <laughs> yeah, they have to like seat belt them, their, themselves into like a little like uh, sleeping bag and zip it up so that when they're asleep, they don't like go floating off somewhere uh, and not realize it, which stuff like that to me, it must feel so weird. Like being in bed and not being able to like feel the sheets on you or feel the pillow. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's something you get used to, but um, you know, you, you don't think about these things. Like we're so used to experiencing weight. So um, anyway, yeah, kind of an interesting thing. Uh, finally then, what does Michael mean by saying, if you weighed yourself on a, in a vacuum, you would weigh about this much more, which again is kind of a confusing term, but he was explaining how one Newton of force is about the weight of an apple. And so the correct answer was that if you weighed yourself, you would weigh, uh, your total body weight would have the weight of an apple added to it, one Newton. That's what he was referring to. Um, and it looks like most of you got that um, correct. Uh, and finally, why is down always changing? This was kind of the take home message of the video. What? Oh, wait. Is it the moon? It's just because, like, uh, the moon and like everything is also pulling on you, right? Yeah. Right. And the there Earth. Are spinners, like, molten. So it's always moving. Mm -hmm. And there's like heavier spots that move around. Yep. And it's changing. Yeah. Like a lot of science, um, physics has to sort of operate on a couple assumptions or else things would be extremely complicated. And one of those assumptions is that we assume that, you know, things like planets, their center of gravity is dead center in the planet. In reality, that's not really true. You have to look at like the molten iron core and stuff and things move around. Um, and so it, it is more complicated. Now, granted, you know, I don't think we're perceiving that. Like we don't sense, whoa, like down suddenly move to the left or to the right. Um, it's so minute. Um, but uh, it is technically changing, so kind of kind of cool. And I don't know if that's maybe that has some to. Well, I guess the um, compasses that's more magnetism. I don't know how that does do with how a compass might shift sometimes, but um, might be something interesting to look into. So great. All right. And then what was the next video all about? What was this popular kind of hit trend? Auto slip. Did all of you get into this at some oh, point? Yeah, my record is like twenty-two in a row. Oh yeah! Oh nice. Yeah, when it right. used to be like a huge thing, like 2016. All right, might have to start uh, start having you guys take videos or something, see who can get the most in a row. I don't know if that would be good use of time though. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so this is um, so when I was kind of messing around with uh, an activity to do with this, 
I found something that, that reminded me about this and I was like, oh, we should talk about the physics of this, which it turns out is actually super complicated. So we're not quite ready to dive into it yet, but we can get a start on it. Um, so what did you notice in the slow motion video about the liquid in the bottle? What did it do, even though the bottle was flipped over? It stayed at the bottom. Yeah, right, and, and it's not perfect, right? You can see that it sloshes a little bit, and apparently that is what really makes the difference in terms of the bottle sticking the landing, that if you want it, you gotta get that slosh back at the perfect like position. To the That's why the bottle kind of slams down. Um, but uh, it's the same idea of the fact that you can generate a force that counteracts gravity, right, temporarily, but even though the bottle was flipped upside down, the, the force exerted on the bottle by you kind of throwing it in that flip pattern um, overcame the gravitational force the earth was exerting on it. Uh, and so therefore the liquid stayed there. And so we're gonna do a little activity to explore this. Um, so I think I might just play the video through WebEx um, and then let you guys go to um, try the activity. So uh, here is me just like before sort of explaining, um, what if I could actually just pull it up here on YouTube. Um, can everyone see this? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Science 2 kiddos. Two activities that I want to do today, uh, again, involving water. The first is to get another container, like a, uh, again, a paper cup or a recycled plastic jar or something like that. Um, do not use anything that's glass or porcelain because we're going to be moving these around a little bit and I don't want anything to break and drop it. First thing I want you to do is just fill up a container with water, maybe about halfway. And then, just a simple demonstration of gravity. Um, obviously, if I take this cup of water and I turn it upside down, water pours out. No surprises there, right? We know the gravitational force is pulling the water down towards the center of the Earth. But what if I told you that there is a way that you could flip this container upside down and keep the water inside of it without having to put a lid on or anything like that? That's what I want to explore today. So again, let's fill the container up probably about three quarters of the way. I'd say maybe just, uh, just below three quarters is how much you want to fill your container up. And I think you can predict what we're going to do, but we're going to try to use centripetal force. Um, it's the same concept behind why the moon doesn't fall back down to the earth, right? That it has this tangential velocity um, that just keeps it falling all the way around the planet. This is a little bit different, um, but we're going to sort of use another force to keep the water in the bottle. Now, this is going to be um, a little bit of a delicate procedure. I would like you to try this. But please, again, do this in a clear space where you can, um, where you have space, you don't get hit anything. Uh, maybe somewhere where you're not afraid to spill a little bit of water. Um, and again, please use a container that isn't going to break if you accidentally drop it. But what you want to do is get a good grip on the container. You want to keep your arms straight and you want to just do a full rotation all the way around. Again, make sure nothing's behind you. Make sure it's good. And you'll notice water did not spill at all. Now, I had to put a little bit of strength into it, right? You've got to go fast. If you go slow, water is definitely going to spill. But if you go fast enough, um, I generate enough force to keep the water in the bottom of the container. Now, here's the thing. If I tried to do that in a smaller rotation, for example, like right here, um, it's not going to work nearly as well, right? If I try to flip it just like this, then it's not not doing all that well, right? I could try it like that, but um, that small rotation doesn't give us enough force. Um, and so the best thing to do is to actually empty the bottle out, which mine was already a little bit empty. But if you have less water in there, that's less mass. And remember, mass is directly proportional to the gravitational force. So it's gonna take a lot less force for me to counteract the force of gravity coming from the Earth. And so now I should be able to just flip this cup now um, without even having to use my, my shoulder as a rotation point and I can still keep the water inside the container. So again, I'd like you to try that. This is what I'd like you to try to document or film. And uh, as I was preparing for this, um, I was reminded of some popular videos um, that came out 
uh, a couple of years ago where everyone was obsessed with flipping bottles. And this does relate a little bit to that in terms of how the liquid behaves. There's a lot more going on with bottle flipping. Uh, and hopefully it's stuff that we'll get into more as we get deeper into physics with um, rotation and center of gravity and things like that. But um, it's sort of similar. Nailed it! If you, uh, you'll notice that the water stays in the bottom of the container even as we flip it up. So what I'd like you to do uh, is just to demonstrate that you did these activities. Uh, use your phone to take a little selfie video of the last two things. So I want you to take a video so of you uh, rotating your container in a small rotation. So you can just hold your phone out like that, have your container here, and just do the little small rotation there, showing you that you're keeping the water inside of it. And then you can have one attempt at a bottle flip, uh, whether you take it or not only record one of them, and that's it. Then you just need to upload that video. Uh, it shouldn't be more than maybe a minute at most. Uh, upload that video to Flipgrid through the link that is in the tasks on Canvas. And as always, then make sure that you have cleaned up your space. If you spill any water, uh, dry it up, um, throw away the container if you use a recycled container, um, right? Make sure you're keeping your, your space clean. All righty. Uh, so, Questions on that? All right, be careful. Uh, I do not want angry parents uh, writing to me about how you like sent a glass of water out the window. Uh, but the one thing I would like you to do is um, try to get a recording of those last two things, of you doing a small rotation with some kind of container, keeping the water in it, and then you're allowed to do one attempt at a bottle flip. Uh, and so those are gonna be uploaded on that um, same canvas post listing the tasks that you need to complete. Uh, what happened to my, oh, there we go. Um, right down here, you'll see there is a link to a flip grid. Um, um, and I made a new topic or an assignment called water spin and bottle flip challenge. Uh, looks like this. And according to Flipgrid, again, I have not used Flipgrid this way, but I think next to your record button, there's like a little dot, dot, dot button and you can actually upload a video. Uh, so, you know, you can use your phone or computer, whatever you, you want to film yourself and then upload the video from there and we'll see if this works. Um, let me know if you have problems. So, um, I want to give you a good amount of time to do this. Um, it's 9.20 now, class ends at 9.40. I want to come back for at least the last five minutes. So, um, let's say, let's go until 9.35. So, that gives us about 16 minutes to at least maybe record your video. You don't have to do everything, but... Um, just give those things a try and uh, see if you can at least maybe record your video. Um, and if you want, you can start trying to post it. So uh, clear on that. All right, I'll see you again at 935 and I'll be here listening if something you got questions or something isn't working.